Hi, and welcome to Topic 1, What is Light? My name is Mary Vukisevich, and I'll be taking you through this lecture series. In this topic, we are going to consider what is light, and we will overview the theories of how light behaves. This is really important for the visual system, and we're going to find out why. So light is a small component of the energy spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. It's the part of the spectrum which is visible to the human eye. And it can stimulate the human eye because certain cells inside the retina of the eye, called photoreceptors, and you might have heard of these, there are rods and cones, they are sensitive to specific wavelengths of light. You can see on the diagram there the different coloured areas from blue and down towards the red range. This is illustrating to you uh, the wavelengths of light that the human eye can see. Now very short wavelengths of light or rather electromagnetic radiation such as cosmic or ultraviolet rays don't stimulate the vision and they actually remain unseen to us. Very long wavelengths such as radio or television waves also don't stimulate the vision and again remain unseen. So the wavelengths that actually comprise light, or the visible spectrum, range from approximately 400 nanometers to about 800 nanometers. 400 being in the violet range, which you can see there at the top, sort of the bluish area, and 800 nanometers, the red range, right down the bottom. This is a very small section of electromagnetic radiation. Um, and what's important to note, though, is irrespective, light remains at a constant speed of about 300,000 kilometers per second. There are essentially two theories about how light behaves. The first one we'll consider is the wave theory. And that's where light is emitted from a source and travels in all directions away from the source in wave fronts. The wave theory was first described by Christian Huygen in the 1600s and he said that light travels from its source in all directions as I said in wave fronts and can be either destructive or constructive. The YouTube clips about the wave theory uh, that you're going to watch very shortly will tell you more about what destructive and constructive uh, waves are. Now, Thomas Young, who lived in the late 1700s, early 18, was an English scientist and he made very significant contributions to the field of vision and light, amongst other things. One of his most important works was something called the double slit experiment, which supports the wave theory of light. And of course, I'll show you that shortly. The second theory to consider is quantum theory. And quantum theory is where light is considered as separate packages of energy traveling in straight lines, known as photons. Whilst the two theories of light behavior exist, each is acceptable for explaining specific phenomena, and in fact, the two theories complement each other. The wave theory deals with the path of light travel, and the quantum theory deals with the amount of energy. When light falls onto an object, it's absorbed and or transmitted and or reflected. The combination of these events is the sum total of what happens to the light. It's either absorbed or transmitted or reflected. The varying degrees of each will depend upon the angle at which the light has struck the object. The nature of the object itself and the wavelength of the light. In the 20th century, there was a significant paradigm shift towards the thinking that light behaves as both a wave and a particle. Before that time, it was only the wave theory that was supported. And now, this thinking that both light could be both wave and particle is called the wave-particle duality theory. And it relates actually to the study of quantum mechanics. 
essentially it was Einstein's idea and together with the YouTube clips that I have for you on what is light and also Thomas Young's double slit experiment which will explain to you the wave theory, I've included a clip about Einstein's photoelectric effect theory. This is also important because it adds another element to the understanding of how light works. And of course we need to understand how light works in order to understand how the eye works. No light, no vision essentially. So please watch all the YouTube clips, complete the supplementary readings and then check your understanding using the revision questions.